This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Hello everybody, welcome to Mike's Mike, my name is Mike. Today we're going to be doing a potentially quite deep dive into Twilight Eclipse. I've done videos on Twilight and Twilight New Moon, but Eclipse? Babe, this is cinema. Twilight Eclipse is giving me very much Avengers Endgame meets Coraline, meets Rugrats All Grown Up, meets Grey's Anatomy. Unfortunately, I will not be explaining that further, but it's true. Now, of course, canonically, Eclipse follows on from New Moon, so why don't we do a little quick refresher on what happened in New Moon? And I want you to consider this recap a gift a public service, if you will, because Eclipse does not have a recap or like a refresher or anything like that at the start of the movie. And we absolutely needed it. Like, damn, they just start the movie with this man running down the street and I'm like, oh, cool. So Volturi. So the most important thing that happened in New Moon was Bella was depressed and she sat in a chair for a few months. Retweet if you've been there. Now, Miss Bella, she was in the trenches because Edward and the Cullensteys, they left Forks to protect Bella. And Bella was like, well, it's over. And she started doing reckless shenanigans like jumping off cliffs. Miss Bella, you're a killer and not Ezra's wife. The real drama started when Bella and Edward were giving Romeo and Juliet slay because Alice had an incorrect vision that Bella had de-worded, told Edward and Edward was like, well, I may as well just turn myself into the Volturi then. Remember the Volturi are kind of like the vampire government. They're also anti-Italian propaganda. And also, look, I'm gonna be honest, they're kind of dressing like shit, Jane excluded. I'm talking about the men. You're 400 years old, you're rich and famous vampires, and you still dress like you're going to the town square to watch a beheading. Like, what's that about? It's just weird, you know what I mean? Like, my personal opinion on the Volturi is that they can all eat shit, basically, except for Jane. I am a Jane-inator. Jane is kind of like the main visuals of the group. She's also the main dancer and also backup vocals. If Jane went on a solo career, yeah, I would support, I would stream. Anyway, so the Volturi have a rule that if a vampire reveals to the humans that they are a vampire, then the Volturi deletes them from existence. So Edward plans to reveal himself to a whole bunch of people by like taking his clothes off and shining bright like a diamond in the town square in Italy. It's actually quite morbid if you think about it. But then Bella turns up and she's like slow-mo sprinting through the square in Italy and she saves him by stopping his strip tease. But now the Volturi want to delete Bella because she knows too much about the vampires. So they're about to her and then Alice is like, wait, babe, I just had a vision. It looks like Bella's gonna become a vampire. Volturi is like, cool, we won't kill Bella as long as you turn her into a vampire. And then at the end of New Moon, Edward's like, I'll turn you into a vampire if you marry me. God, the drama. Like, you are still in school, go write an essay. Right, so Twilight Eclipse, let's get started. Eclipse starts with a man in a city walking in the rain. Now, I want you to ask yourselves, have you ever seen a scene in Twilight that's outdoors and doesn't involve rain? No, you can't because it doesn't exist. He's walking in the rain and then someone slash some think runs past and knocks him over. He's all like, who's there? <laughs> Shaggy, Scooby, <laughs> Daphne, <laughs> Mystery Inc. He tries to run away and he gets bitten. He's laying on the floor in the rain, screaming. In all honesty, it's actually quite disastrous for him. Cut to black. After the title screen, we finally see our number one, Edward. Hashtag Team Edward, you know the vibes. And we also see our number 49, Bella. Bella and Edward are in the field and they're reading a poem or something and they're hooking up. And Bella's like, oh, I've got an English final. And Edward's all, marry me. And Bella's all, change me into a vampire. Edward is set on marriage. Bella's a little bit apprehensive. She's like, mm, maybe I'm a little bit young for this. And for once in her life, she might actually be right. Now back at home, Bella's talking to Charlie. Snaps for Charlie, where my Charlie Nate is at. Charlie is anti-Edward because he thinks that Bella's being dumb and stupid when she's around Edward, which is true, like it's true. And he's trying to get Bella to hang out with people besides Edward, such as Jacob. Quick side note, do we think that Kylie was perhaps inspired by Twilight or perhaps twice spired to name her son Wolf? Sound off in the comments below. So Charlie tells Bella to go visit Jacob. She's like, fine, uh, I'll go do it. Uh. <laughs> Shaggy, Scooby. Edward appears and tells her that it's too dangerous for her to go see the wolf gang, Armadeus Mozart. Remember there's the whole drama of the werewolves versus the vampires, there's a lot going on. The next scene we have Bella walking to the cafeteria with this fucking wig on. What's going on? I'm sorry, but this wig looks so different to like all the previous scenes of her hair. It's like, mm, natural slay. And then suddenly it's like, boof, rug on her head. So Bella's in the cafeteria talking some nonsensical nonsense with her friends. And then we have one of them saying, wait a minute, People give you money, it's some kind of background conversation. But then the captions say, wait a minute, you believe in money? No. But you know what I do believe in? This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Gather around everyone. Surfshark is a VPN, a virtual private network available as an app and a browser extension that lets you access content from all around the world and also protects you when you're browsing online. Right, so we know Edward and we like Edward. 
and we know that Edward can read minds. Hashtag Team Edward, like you know the vibes. Now imagine Edward was a multi-billion dollar company tracking your browser activity and selling your data. Oh, not so gorgeous anymore. Now Surfshark is like Bella's mental shield that Edward can't get through. I'm not even done with these analogies, just you wait. Remember Jane? She can hack people and make them experience pain. Yeah, babe, that's literally malware. Surfshark can help against malware with features like clean web, which also blocks ads and phishing attempts. And with over 3000 servers worldwide, Surfshark makes it super easy to change your location and unlock geo-locked content. So if a show you wanna watch isn't available on Netflix in your country, you can just use Surfshark to change your location and voila. I mean like, boom, just like that, I'm in France. Like Edward would have to run there. Yeah, he can run fast, but I'm faster, babe. Literally drop down, click. Surfshark also offers one account across an unlimited amount of devices. So kind of like Bella protecting herself and Charlie. If you use my code MikeSmike, M-I-K-E-S-M-I-C, you can get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Surfshark has a money back guarantee, so there's no risk for you to try it out. Make sure you head to the link in the description to check out that deal and don't forget to use my code Mike's Mike. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it and find out what VPN Bella gets up to next. Now there's been some drama happening in Seattle. Remember that opening scene with the man on the floor in the rain? Yeah, that was Seattle vibes. People are disappearing, there's lots of violence around and Edward says if it keeps escalating then the Volturi is going to have to intervene. Edward says that we absolutely do not want that. We do not want the Volturi to turn up. I mean, speak for yourself. I need Jane to appear on this screen of mine. Seattle's close to Forks, so if the Volturi go to Seattle and see there's all this vampire drama, the next clan that's closest to Seattle, the girls in Forks, otherwise known as the Cullensties, they're gonna be under fire. Volturi will come look, see that Bella's not a vampire, or it's gonna be bad. Bella goes to visit her momager in Florida and it's giving very much pre-vampirification checklist. Edward saying things like, you should go see your mum before graduation, wink, wink. You should talk to Jacob before graduation, wink, wink. So it seems graduation is synonymous with vampirification at this point. I think the understanding and the arrangement is that once Bella graduates, then Edward will be like, <laughs> in the neck, she'll turn into a vampire. So Bella goes to Florida to catch up with her mum and Edward follows her because he's doing protection detail or some shit. But he's like in the Florida sun and he's not shiny. Like why are you giving still when you should be giving sparkling? In other news, the Cullensteers are chasing a red-headed woman through the forest. Based on the way the Cullensteers are acting, we know that this red-headed woman is a threat, like she's bad news. But I'm just thinking, hmm, evil red-headed woman, hmm, Veronica. But then this lady, I know that's not Veronica. That's not the Veronica we grew up with. Post Florida and back at school, Bella and Edward pull up in their hashtag Volvo, get out of their hashtag Volvo and walk away from their hashtag Volvo, hashtag spawn. And guess who they see at the school? Jacob, boo. Now let me tell you something. If there's one thing that Jacob's gonna do, it's have wet hair. Jacob tells Bella that Veronica's back in town and Edward's like, oh, why did you say that? Why would you say that? Mona, don't ever say that. Jacob says he knows this because when the Cullensteers were chasing Veronica through the forest, Emmett accidentally crossed a line, literally and figuratively, into the wolf territory. And yeah, it was a little bit disastrous. So that means the red-headed lady is in fact Veronica. Babe, what happened to capital O original Veronica? Side note, Edward is looking very vampire these days. How is nobody at this school like, um, what's going on? Why do you look like that? There's also only like two school scenes in this entire movie and then no schoolwork. No one does any schoolwork in this movie. So I guess it's fuck school. It's very euphoria vibes. Rue? When was this? Right after New Year's. <sighs> you dumb fucking bitch. I'm gonna fuck you up. I'm just trying to visualize how Euphoria would be if they suddenly just like dropped a supernatural character in there. Like imagine if the season two finale of Euphoria just randomly had Alice Cullen in it. <laughs> Actually, I have a question for you. Maddie Perez versus Alison De Laurentiis versus Blair Waldorf versus Veronica Lodge, who would win in a fight. Actually replace Alison to the Renters with Mona Vanderwall because Mona Vanderwall's killed like two people. <laughs> new character alert, new character alert. Leah Clearwater, she's immediately a queen. She's also a werewolf. I think this might be our first female werewolf. She's a little bit of a trailblazing icon. There's a little bit of peripheral character love triangle drama and I'm just thinking, hmm, that's not at all relevant to the main characters. Jacob tells Bella that werewolf Sam dated Leah but fell in love with Emily and imprinted on her. Now imprinting? Would you like a sedative? It becomes important in Breaking Dawn, so let's discuss it. What's imprinting then? In the most confusing and uninformative way possible, Jacob tells Bella that imprinting is kind of like an obsession. So if you imprint on someone, they become your reason for living. Bella and Jacob have an argument and he finds out her plans to serve vampire cosplay after graduation. And in response, he says he hates the vampires. They're not even really alive. And quote, he says, better you be really dead than one of them. 
Um, look, I'm gonna be honest, it's getting kind of weird. Like, go do some homework, go write an essay. You are still in school, don't forget, and put a shirt on and dry your hair. While this is happening, a vampire breaks into Bella's house and does a little bit of snooping. And guess who this vampire is? It's Mr. Surf in the rain at the start of the movie. After finding out about this, the Avengers assemble to discuss what to do and their eyes look a little bit different. Like their eyes are fully black now and I was a little bit spooked, I'm not gonna lie. I forgot that that was a thing that happens, that their eyes change color. After some Googling, I discovered that their eyes change color when they're hungry. So when they're like fully like chill vibes, nothing is going on, then they've got like the light brown gold eyes. And then when it's time to snack, then their eyes get darker and it's like red and stuff. Is no one in the town like, why are their eyes changing color? Why are the Cullens wearing contact lenses? Now let's talk about Rosalie's wig. Um, it is a little bit disastrous and evil if you really think about it. I'm not gonna lie, it looks a little bit thick. Like it looks dense and it looks warm. Like I just know that her scalp is sweating under that because I've been there. What the fuck kind of bug is that? At 28 minutes and 32 seconds, Bella says, and I quote, from now on I'm Switzerland because Jacob and Edward are fighting over her. And in that moment, yeah, I was just thinking, where is Stephanie Meyer's like Nobel Prize for literature for this? Cause I got chills. From now on, I'm Switzerland. I enjoy the Twilight movies, but my least favorite thing about the Twilight movies is the Twilight movies. Like I love all the side shit, like the vampire army building and all this like drama with the werewolves and the Volturi and Jane. Uh, and then suddenly Bella's like, from now on I'm Switzerland because these two men are fighting over her. So because of Veronica, the Volturi, and now this new vampire man that's snooping around Bella's house, the Cullens are spread Thin, right? So the new plan is for the vampires to work with the werewolves to protect Bella and Charlie. And we love an alliance. As they say, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. That is not relevant. But it sounds cool, so we're gonna keep it in. At this point, I would like to say that Jacob is really pissing me off. There's a weird scene where Edward drops Bella off with Jacob because Edward needs to go hunt to get some blood, you know, because he needs a little bit of power. So he drops Bella off and Jacob greets Bella with, hey beautiful, Edward is right there. Edward is five meters away. Jacob's like, hey beautiful, without his shirt on. Ooh, if I was Edward, like, oh. this man is too bold. Again, he's doing way too much. He beautiful. What's that about? Jacob, babe, give up. Edward drops Bella off with Jacob and he's thinking, cool, they're gonna go do something normal. Like go to a cafe or like go watch a movie. And Jacob's like, let's go to werewolf meeting. And then they go to the werewolf meeting and Bella's like, I don't know if I should be here. And Jacob's like, well, you're the first like non-werewolf that we're bringing to the meeting in history or something. And I'm just thinking she is not worth it. Why are you gonna break tradition for Miss Bella Swan? She doesn't even wanna be there. And at the meeting, some of the tribe leaders, including Jacob's dad, they tell the story of the first vampires in Forks and they're called the Cold Ones. The tribe elders also say that they can tell something terrible is coming. And the truth of the matter is, I love an ominous build. I love it, I love it. Like I love the drama. It's like the visual form of that like siren from Hell's Kitchen. And if you combine the, ooh, something's coming with like the vampire in Seattle and the snooping and all this drum with the Volturi, yeah. It's great, I love it. Speaking of the Seattle drama, Mr. From the Rain at the start, he's out of control. He's turning everyone he sees into a vampire. He's building a vampire army. The Cullens are finding out about this and they're like, damn, it's getting weird. And as a Cullenator, I think they're so right for that. Now, Zaddy Cullen, Mr. Carlisle, he's stressed. He's like, the Volturi are about to step in. And that dude's like, now hold on. What if the Volturi are behind it? These movies are good, like I'm having fun. I'm enjoying this movie, if we exclude all the Jacob shenanigans. This movie fits a new rule that I've come up with called the average 40 year old man rule. If an average 40 year old man would not enjoy this piece of media, then there's a very high chance that I will enjoy it. I don't think the average 40 year old man would like Twilight Eclipse and I like it, so there we go. Correlation implies causation, hypothesis proven, eh. At 40 minutes and 35 seconds, Jacob is just fucking on one. He says to Bella, I'm in love with you and I want you to choose me instead of him. The colossal pick me energy. He's literally saying, pick me, pick me, <laughs> love me, choose me. Bella's just kind of there like, um, I don't like you like that. I don't love you like a love song. And he says, I don't believe you. I can't stand him. He's like really pissing me off. And then Jacob kisses her when she very clearly does not want to do that. She does not want to partake in those shenanigans and he's just going for it. Like, 
Ooh, I don't like that. In response to the unwanted feral kiss, Bella punches him in the face, but because he's literally like a supernatural being, the punch like sprains her hand. It's literally like... This whole scene just really cemented how Team Edward I am. I'm so Team Edward, it's ridiculous. I don't understand how one could be Team Jacob after that. Like, it's just... Ugh. Now, at Casa Cullen, Rosalie is having her center stage moment, finally. She's talking to Bella, and Bella's like, Ugh, why do you hate me so much? And Rosalie says, I don't hate you. I'm envious of you because you get to make a choice, but you're being dumb and you're choosing wrong. She's talking about the voluntary vampirification. Rosalie talks about how she was kind of robbed of having a life, and now she's a vampire and she's stuck. She's kind of frozen in terms of appearance and also like life trajectory having to move around all the time. Rosie's basically saying that Bella shouldn't become a vampire and she's making some very excellent points and Bella's just there like I hear you babe but I literally love Edward so much doll. I think Bella's 18 at this point and this is a big decision and I would say no don't vampirify yourself but also not doing so should not automatically mean that you have to spend the rest of your life with Jacob. But then her decision is also complicated because the Volturi, the anti-Italian propaganda machine, they're just like Bella has to become a vampire otherwise we will come and delete her off the face of this earth. So I guess she kind of doesn't have a choice. She has to become a vampire. Anyway so we see all the new vampires going absolutely feral in Seattle and and then my bestie Jane turns up. Jane swoops in on the scene and she's all pensive. She's like, hmm, do we shut this down or no? The options that Jane's presenting are, do we K-word them and clean up this mess, bless this mess, or do we let them do what they were created to do? And she leaves, she doesn't intervene, she doesn't K-word them. So that means she's leaving them to do what they were meant to do. So does this mean that the Volturi is involved? Like the Volturi is straight up plotting at this stage. Back with the humans, it's graduation and the girls are partying. Remember Anna Kendrick is in the Twilight movies. Perhaps Twilight is the prequel for Pitch Perfect because in Pitch Perfect, she's just starting university and in Twilight Eclipse, she's graduating from high school. Hmm, did you think about that? Jacob gives Bella a werewolf keychain. Okay. Bella literally just told you to fuck off. In nice terms, they can't say fuck off because it's PG-13 movie, but she like met that punch when she got that little sprain, right? At the graduation after party, Alice has a vision of the vampire army in Seattle basically like huffing a Bella scented candle. They're smelling her blouse. So it looks like the vampire army is coming to Forks to K-word Bella. She's just a little bit of a disaster magnet, isn't she just? All eyes on her in the center of Forks, just like a circus. I'm once again reminded of a thought that I had during my new moon video, which was, is Bella worth the drama? No. Now why is Jasper at this graduation party serving Willy Wonka? What's that about? After hearing about the vampire army vision and the candle sniffing, Jacob's like, right, we're gonna have to work together. The Cullensteys and the Werewolfsteys working together to protect Bella. It looks like Bella is wigged up again. Is it a wig, yes or no? Survey says yes. Apparently Kristen Stewart cut her hair to film The Runaways. Now raise your hand if you watched The Runaways. Also, I'd be interested to know how much she got paid to cut her hair, because I can imagine the people making Twilight were like, don't fucking cut your hair. We will pay you to not cut your hair. Now someone random is starting to get a lot of screen time, Jasper. He's apparently the one that has all the knowledge on how to fight newborn vampires, referring to the vampire army. He runs this little training camp and we get scenes of the Cullens fighting each other. And of course, Alice serves like, come on. And then suddenly it's dropped that Jasper was in the Confederate army in the Civil War. Why? Was that a necessary detail for his character? Like, I'm actually a little bit speechless. At 59.18, we get this scene, which may look familiar because it's also this scene. Bella and the squad work out that the person behind the vampire army is bum bum bum, Veronica. Now this is kind of spicy because Alice should have known this because she can see the future based on people's decisions. I actually really like Alice's power because it's kind of like she's aware of all these possible options and outcomes for the future and then whenever someone makes a decision, it like cuts the number of possible futures down. So with Alice on side, they should have known this ages ago that Veronica was in charge, calling the shots, making decisions, but the T is she wasn't making decisions on purpose because she knew about this. She knew about Alice's little power. So she was giving BTS, not K-pop behind the scenes, right? She was just on the sidelines, letting Mr. Sir from the rain make the decisions, but she was very much like, mm on the side. So while the rest of the Cullens are out like looking for animals because they need some blood for the upcoming battle and the werewolves are out running protection detail for Bella and Charlie, Bella is getting it on with Edward at Casa Cullen. I've said it before but I'll say it again. This house bangs. I want the Cullen house for myself. 
How much do you think it costs? I offer $100, Carlin's take it or leave it. If the Carlin house was in Melbourne, I just know that shit would be like $5 million, right? And I'd have to sell my limited edition Rina Sawayama hat, which is worth $5 million, to get the house. Actually, now that I think about it, I couldn't do that. Like, I couldn't do that. Anyway, Bella is down catastrophic for Edward, and she tells him that she'll marry him and she'll do whatever he wants if he sleeps with her. And Edward's worried that he'll lose control and K-word her while they're doing it. What in the teen drama is going on here? This is so extremely Twilight vibes. Edward's suddenly like, no, babe. We're not doing all that nasty stuff until we get married. And then he gets down, potentially on two knees, a la Shane Dawson. We don't know, we can't see his knees. And he proposes to Bella with a fugly ass ring and she says, yes. Now this ring, oh, it's not for me. It's not for me. Like, I'm sorry to say, if Edward proposed to me with that ring, nah, absolutely not. Go ahead, call me superficial, call me fake. Call me hot, sexy and gorgeous. Uh. But the truth of the matter is, those Cullens are rich. They have so much money. And you're telling me he couldn't go buy a nice diamond for Bella? And if he's so set on giving her this like, mid 1500s black plague type crusty ring, like, clean it. It looks dirty. And I know this because my TikTok for you page has been like people cleaning their necklaces and pendants and shit. And this looks like one of the before photos. Like it pissed me off. It's costumey. Now let's discuss new Veronica who's assembling the vampire army. Veronica 2.0 is played by Bryce Dallas Howard who's just a little bit excellent. I have to say Veronica 2.0 actually did outsell Veronica 1.0 but I was just taken aback. I got whiplash the first time I saw her. I was like, is this that girl? Is she that girl? She is that girl. Now remember the vampire army is coming to Forks to K-Word Bella because she's got that mm, delicious blood. Shirtless Jacob carries Bella to an undisclosed location and by doing so, he's masking the smell of Bella's delicious blood with his disgusting werewolf stench. We do need to discuss the shirtless logic a little bit further, I'm afraid. My understanding is that he's not wearing a shirt because it's just gonna rip when he transforms into a werewolf, right? So then, why is he wearing pants? Who is supplying the cargo shorts to all these werewolves post transformation? Like does the werewolf pack just have one person designated the pants man that just gives people pants? Moral of the story is Jacob, if you can wear pants, you can wear a shirt. Now this undisclosed location is the top of a cliff and Edward's there waiting for Bella post Uber ride, Jacob. Bella says to Jacob, you should get back. And he's like, no, I'm staying to protect you. Okay, it's not like I have a literal vampire protector right here. Edward could absolutely take Jacob, are you joking? Bella, I can protect you. Edward can and has done a better job. Now this next scene, it's nighttime on the cliff and Bella's in a tent. And oh, babe, it's windy up there. It's like someone with gluten intolerance post pasta, like it's bad. Miss Bella is freezing in that tent. She is cold. And Edward, he can't do nothing because he's literally dead and he's cold blooded. <laughs> cold blooded. <laughs> Shirtless Jacob comes into the tent and offers to snuggle with Bella to warm her up. Edward's like, not on my watch. And Jacob says to Edward to his face, and I quote, let's face it, I am hotter than you. No! I was floored. Made friends with the floor. Guys, I cannot stand Jacob. He's doing way too much. He needs to be stopped. But then, while hugging Bella, he says to her that she would warm up faster if she took her clothes off. While Edward is right there. He's like saying all these out of pocket things and Edward is right there, less than a meter away. And Jacob's like, I'm hotter than you. Hey Bella, take your clothes off. I can warm you up faster. He is genuinely a menace. I'm explosively officially team Edward. Like I'm standing my concession card for team Edward. The fucking audacity, right? Jacob's what, 17? Edward's like 108. And Jacob's like, I'm hotter. I'm harder, I'm better, I can protect your Bella. And on the other side of the fence from trashy, you have classy. Edward says to Jacob, if we weren't natural enemies and you weren't trying to steal my reason for existing, I might actually like you. Like he's such a gentleman. Like you team Jacob Naders, like sorry, you just don't get it. The next morning, Jacob finds out that Bella's going to be marrying Edward and he starts spiraling. And he says to Bella, maybe I should go into the forest and get K worded by something to make this easier for you. Sorry? Okay, so it's giving manipulation now. And then to stop the spiral, Bella says, Jacob, kiss me. Like, what? And then they make out on the cliff, like near Edward. I'm afraid this may be too much for me. Like, why would you do that? And Edward, the gentleman that he is, he says that this all happened because Bella loves Jacob. And Bella's like, slay so true, but I love you more. I'm afraid that every main character in this movie might be a little bit too annoying. 
apart from Edward and Alan. Alan? Who the fuck's Alan? Alice. Alan? Oh my god, anyway. So now it's time for the fight in the field. Cullens and Werewolves versus the Fresh Vampire Army. They've lured the Vampire Army to this field using a little Bella blood sample. Team Cullen is demolishing, but then Riley, the Mr. Sir Vampire from the rain at the start of the movie, and Veronica have worked out where Edward and Bella are. Boom, a werewolf appears and attacks Riley. Edward and Veronica have a little battle and it's really not looking great for her. But then Riley knocks out the werewolf and suddenly it's 2v1 against Edward and as a citizen of Edward Town, it's real stressful for me. Veronica's about to pull Edward's head off and then Bella picks up a shark rock and slices her arm open to distract them. And like it worked, Veronica and Riley are like, mmm, it's impossible for me to ignore this bug because it's just so fucking delicious. But at the same time, I'm just kind of like, that was kind of cringe. Like, why does everything that Bella does make me cringe? She's just cringe. I think it's because humans are so boring in comparison to the vampires and werewolves. But then it occurred to me, maybe Bella's blood to a vampire is kind of like a brown sugar latte extra cheese foam with boba bubble tea to me like I'm sorry I can't say no anyway because of the distraction Edward rips Veronica's head off and yeah it's over for her she's done she's fallen off the chart post battle Alice has a vision of the Volturi turning up and that's bad news because they have to get these werewolves out of there before the Volturi turn up because then they'd be like what the fuck is going on here why are you mortal enemies working together oh wait it's because of Bella so the werewolves have to leave but then there's drama because Jacob got in a little bit of an accident and snapped all the bones on the right side of his body. This man, I swear, like he just needs to be the center of attention at all times. So then the pack leaves, carrying Jacob and the Volturi turn up. Jane stands, let me hear you make some noise. Jane and Aiders, are you there? I think Jane says something like, ooh, looks like we missed a good fight. Babe, so did we. Like we saw like three seconds of fight. And it was just like the vampires being like, <laughs> and the wolves being like, rawr. <laughs> Rawr, rawr, rawr. Daphne, Scooby, Mystery Inc. So then where was this exciting battle? You know what I mean? So the little Volturi squad's there and it's mainly just like chats and little spicy combos. But then Jane notices that Bella is still human. It's kind of like a Walking Dead video game. Like Jane will remember that. And there's also this subplot of this like little teenager vampire in the vampire army that the Cullens have decided to take in and they're gonna like make her a nice person or whatever the fuck. And then the Volturi is like to the Cullens, did that sound like something you want? because he's never gonna get it and they kill the teenage vampire. Now back at the little makeshift hospital room with Jacob. This man, oh my God. He's literally so close to death on this bed with half his body broken and he's still fucking going at it. He's like, Bella, I'm exactly right for you, Bella. Give, <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, so the end of the movie is Bella and Edward in the field again. They fucking love the field, don't they? Bella's saying she's now extremely on board the marriage idea and she's gonna go tell Charlie about it. Boom, end of the movie. God, wow, what an explosion finish. Largely, I would say Eclipse brought the drama, it's true. I enjoyed the fighting from the end of New Moon more, but I know there's some fighting coming in Breaking Dawn, uh, and I will be covering them. I think I'll probably do Breaking Dawn 1 and 2 in one like little bit longer video, which will be super fun, because we get to talk about Renesme. You named my daughter after the Loch Ness Monster? That doth bring me to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like. If you got something to say, leave a comment. Are you Team Jacob or Team Edward? If you're Team Jacob, literally, why are you here? Like I just slandered Jacob for like 25 minutes straight. Next video will be a long one. And it'll be lots of fun to so keep an eye out for that. And new episodes of the podcast are now going up again every week. So go check that out. Also, don't forget to check out that link in the description for the Surfshark deal. Thanks again to Surfshark sponsoring this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you all soon. Peace out. Bye.